Hello everyone, we are in our watermelon field today. We will talk about watermelon watering. One of the important details about watermelon watering is how you water it. There are two types of irrigation methods. The first is the drip irrigation method. The second is the flood irrigation method. Or you can name it differently. In the flood irrigation method, you can irrigate your field with waterways or water channels that you have previously prepared. This remains a somewhat old method. Currently, drip irrigation method is generally used. Because in the other type of flood irrigation method, you had to choose a flatter land. However, with the drip irrigation method, you do not need to create any roads on your land. You just plow your field straight. After applying, you can easily water your watermelon by spreading the drip on the places you have determined. This way, your field does not need to be flat. You can easily irrigate your field even if it is hilly. Because there is no water flowing suddenly, you can easily water it as it drips and penetrates deep into the soil. Today we will talk to you about the drip system. One of the important factors in the drip irrigation method is that there must be water near your field. Of course, water needs to be available in the other irrigation method, but having it nearby in the drip system has the following advantage. In the drip irrigation system, after spreading the drips on the field, a blind plug is attached to the ends of the drips to ensure that the drips flow where they are. When this happens, this means that the water is pushing the engine. If you start the water engine in a very remote place, or in a place where there will be a lot of hills, you will strain the engine. After deciding where we will get the water, we need to position the drips in our fields accordingly. While the watermelon is a tiny seedling in the first stage, as it grows later on, it reaches 3 to 4 meter arm length when it is time to harvest. That's why we need to leave a distance between two watermelons. It can be left between 3.5 meter and 4 meter at the request of the field owner. Its ideal range is around 380 meter or 3.75 meter. There is even something from ancient people. Take three, four steps and measure that way. There is a traditional method like this, passed down from our fathers and grandfathers. After laying our drips horizontally at three, four meter intervals, we plant watermelons approximately 80 centimeters between the rows along the vertical length of those drips. Because watermelon arms, if we straighten them horizontally, can reach three to four meter arm length from left to right, but sometimes it doesn't need to be too frequent as it grows vertically when we can't fix it. It will be more efficient if we plant watermelons at 80 cm intervals between vertical rows along the length of the drip. The distance between two drips is 3.5 meter, 4 meter horizontally, and the distance between watermelons in drip length can be determined as approximately 80 cm. First, we place our water motor on the edge of our field. We have a beat engine. The beat engine runs on diesel. We install the beat engine on the edge of our field. After installing the beat engine on the edge of our field, we lay a thick pipe coming from our engine on our field. After laying our pipe, we lay the thin drip pipe coming out of those pipes, double-sided left and right. We lay these drip pipes on our field at 3.5 meter, 4 meter intervals, as we measured before. This is how we prepare our field. We either plant watermelon seedlings that we have previously prepared and grown from seeds, or we purchase ready-made watermelon seedlings and plant them. In this way, our field is ready for watermelon planting. Today we talked about watermelon watering. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments section below. Keep farming! <laughs>